Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is material the square root node. I've gone ahead, fired up this quick little example. It should be pretty simple. The square root node simply gives you the square root math result of whatever input you put into it. So let's go ahead and cover how this works. Our square root node is pretty simple. It operates on a single float input value and then it outputs a square root result. If you were to plug in something more than a single float, it's going to go ahead and apply it to all of the floats inside of it and then output the result. Our square root node has no parameters, it just has the input and the output. So let's go ahead and look at how this works. So if we put a 4 into our square root node and we look at our result, well let's actually put our 4 straight into a mist of color. We're going to get a bright white. It's a 4 for our white value. If we put it into our square root node and hook up our square root node, the square root of 4 is 2, so we're going to get a 2 for our result. It's pretty simple. If we plug in a vector 2, for example, here's a gradient along the left and right up horizontal gradient, we're going to get back this to the result. Now it's going to apply the square root to all of the values that are input in. So our blacks are going to end up being less black and our whites are going to end up being more white. Well, sort of. It's kind of going to crush the top and the bottom is what it's going to do. Because keep in mind a square root of a smaller negative number is going to actually end up giving you a larger number. So Black is going to be zero. Let's let's go with point. Let's go with a point two value. If we were to take and put a square root of point two into, if we were to get the square root of point two, we're going to end up with something more along the result of a point four. So it's going to brighten up our darker colors. So if you take something, and I'll show you this for exactly how it works. Let's plug in this one right here. Here's a vector four and we plug it into our square root. What you're seeing is our darker colors here are being, let's zoom in, let's, let's move this out of the way, let's move this up, and let's zoom in. You're gonna see kind of the opposite effect of a power node. You're gonna see our darker colors getting lighter, and our lighter colors kind of being crushed away from the light more towards the dark. So you end up more with this flatter color noise texture than this darker distinctive one. Our blacks here, are crushed more towards the white, and our white white values are crushed more towards the gray. So that is what the square root node does and how you can use it. It it will the documentation mentions it only takes in a single float value, but as you can see, you can put in a vector two or vector three or vector four. If I put a vector four in here, for example, you'll see this result. It can take them and it's going to apply to each of the inputs, each of the individual floats and then apply square root to that and then give you back the result. So that's it. That's what our square root node is for. It's a math operator. If you need a square root, you'll know you need it and that's how it works. If you don't know you need it, it's a useful way of bringing up, if you're using textures in your zero to one range, it's a useful way of bringing up your blacks and keeping your whites from becoming overblown. So that's it. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below.